use this in the market here because people used to buy chocolates just in the supermarket over the counter and uh, it is not wrapped specially or anything so people love this and uh, I'm happy that they do. They come and buy for special occasions all the time. We were always um, able to buy chocolates uh, in Libya and in, even during hard times but um, this is a different line because it, uh, it is mainly about the elegance of a present you are giving or the elegance of uh, uh, sharing a nice chocolate in, uh, in special occasions. With things opening and improving, I think people tend to, to spoil themselves a little bit. The Haroon family run the only department store in the city. They started off with a stall in the old souk. This style of sauce uh, is very successful because uh, Libyan uh, people are changing, very ch uh, changing uh, by time, and uh, especially uh, youth people uh, are changing and they like uh, modern things. Uh, but the old people are still uh, stick to traditions and they are uh, deep in tradition. One of the other new things Libyans are being encouraged to try for the first time is to invest in a newly established stock exchange. This is Perestroika, Libyan style. It's a small, dramatic sign that the Libyan people's Jamaharia is adapting to the future. But will Libyans, and it's only open to Libyans so far, have enough confidence to put their money here rather than in Tupperware boxes? <laughs> أن موضوع سوق الأوراق المالية حديث العهد بالاقتصاد الليبي وبالتالي يحتاج الأمر إلى التوعية برنامج توعية كبير أيضا هناك تحديات تتمثل في عدم وجود الخبرات اللازمة التي تعمل على إنشاء سوق الأوراق المالية الضمانات الأساسية هي الثقة في الاقتصاد الوطني وهذه الحمد لله متوفرة وموجودة فاقتصادنا جيد وينمو وتوقعات أنه سيكون اقتصاد مزدهر في الفترة القادمة على الاستثمارات هذه كلها ستجعل الاقتصاد الليبي اقتصاد قوي اقتصاد نامي وهذا ما أبداه كثير من المستثمرين الأجانب من ثقتهم أنه سيكون هناك اقتصاد ليبي فاعل وقوي جدا وبالتالي سيطمئن كل من يستثمر في الأوراق المالية بأن سيكون في أمان بالإضافة إلى الجميع جوانب التشريعية والقانونية والتنظيمية اللي لا بد أن تكون متواجدة في أي سوق للأوراق المالية. If Libya does get the new investment it's after, how will the outward face of the country change? Will it go the way of the Emirates? Will architects from around the world vie for Libyan real estate on which to build their skyscrapers? What worries me most is uh, uh, I would call it the invasion of the investment investors to the country because they have different perception of what we have in terms of uh, architecture and heritage. Uh, we are a big museum actually. Dubai, I think, they have managed a new image for their cities, but frankly speaking, I was a bit uh, shocked because of the boom of these skyscrapers. It does not happen in Frankfurt, it does not happen in London, it does not happen in Paris, and in any other uh, you know, Western big cities. Now what I'm trying to say is the same story was happening in London and Paris. I think we have it in Tripoli. If many of this country's classical wonders have been forgotten, it's perhaps truer to say that this nation's modernist masterpieces are pretty much undiscovered. For lovers of architectural modernism, Tripoli could be the next Brasilia. Colonel Al Madawi is one of the original group of colonels who took part in the revolution. Now he runs an independent art foundation, the Art House in Tripoli. We know a lot about the West, but the West, they don't know us. That's why they are doing a lot of mistakes with us. If they understand that we are a nation trying to build ourselves and to protect our history with our own image, we don't have to follow anybody. We have the history, we have the past, and we believe we have the future. A nation with history, nobody can order. A lot of people talking about democracy. Some of them, they got it 400 years ago. We have democracy since thousands of years ago. How? The teacher, they want him to be a student. We have our own culture. 
we have our own way of life. We need the people to understand us, understand our culture. Let us talk people to people. One of the most extraordinary episodes that I've come across in this series was the invitation to a former palace on a rainy evening in Tripoli. The event, an impromptu fashion show, could have given even John Galliano a few pointers. It would be great if you tell me, we've got these girls coming down, uh, what, we're, what we're going to see here. What is, what is the significance um, of these costumes? Okay, uh, Medina Tarabolis. And maybe give you some background about this, if you could explain about what we're seeing here. Arus al Asr al Hali, Medina Tarabolis. Lips that it cohen men rde, rde harir mutakamel bil fudda. Malagmaja, fudda, kamla. Malaknag, rubai dinia. Malaknag is sweet. Malaknag is sweet. Malaknagil, is shimbir, is cross. Lips that in the last real hali li madin tarablis. I'd be keen to know, as young Libyan women, do you think that there is more or less of a desire to embrace traditional dress in this country compared to Tunisia or Egypt or, or Algeria? I'm quite curious to see what becomes of this place. Does Libya one day turn into Dubai on the Mediterranean? Does it become a member of the European Union? Or does much of it pretty much stay the same as it is at the moment? I think it's rather charming to be at an international airport and still see available advertising space. If Libya does reposition itself, perhaps it should be the world's most underbranded nation. We are traders by nature. Left to trade, probably we can do a lot, but in a very uh, conservative and uh, smooth growing way, uh, no explosions expected. This country is living on a sea of oil and gas. It, is, it has huge wealth under the soil. Um, as the world, uh, as, as the oil economy starts to stutter because oil becomes less and less economical to, to transport and to, to process. This country's got gas. Now, as the 70, 80, 100 billion dollars a year of, of revenues from fossil fuels come into this country, well, of course it's going to pervade society. Of course the investment's going to be there. And in my view, I'll be able to come back to this place in 20 years and see another Dubai. I don't see any reason why not. Well, I've got the t-shirt, I've got the pin, and now I'm off to the States. Sanctions might have been lifted, but um, there's still no direct flights to the United States. Wish me luck with U.S. immigration.